Hello and welcome back to another video of the Brainy Heart. In this video, we'll be talking about neurons. Neurons are the building blocks of one of the most important organ systems in the body, the nervous system. Today, in this video, we'll be looking at the anatomy of a nerve cell, which is another name for a neuron, and we'll also take a look at the process of neural firing. So, let's get right into it. So, let's start off by talking about the anatomy of a nerve cell. A nerve cell does not have the typical structure of a animal cell. It does not have many of the things that a normal animal cell would have. The nervous system as a whole is very unique, and so is the neuron. But let's get right into the anatomy. Right here, we've got dendrites. Dendrites connect to the axon terminals of other neurons. And an axon terminal is this area in any neuron. The axon terminal houses many neurotransmitters, which are chemicals that neurons use to communicate with each other. And this is where a synapse happens. A synapse is where the dendrite of the receiving neuron and the axon terminal of the sending neuron are very close together. And there's a very small gap between the axon terminal and the dendrite. And a impulse is sent between the two neurons. We'll talk more about how that's done later in this video. But coming back to the anatomy, the neuron has a nucleus, and the nucleus is found in the cell body, and the cell body is also called the soma. So moving down, we have the axon hillock, which is the area between the cell body and the axon, and the axon is this whole chain-like thing. So that's the axon, and this is the axon hillock. We'll talk more about the functions of all these parts later in this video, and it'll make more sense when I explain neural firing. But for now, just remember all these terms and where they're found in the cell. So, like I said before, this whole thing is the axon. And on the axon, you can find Schwann cells, and the Schwann cells make up the myelin sheath. And finally, the nodes of Ranvier are the gaps in between the myelin sheath in the axon. So that's pretty much the anatomy of the cell. So just to review, we have the dendrites, which connect to the axon terminals of other neurons, and the axon terminal can be found at the end of a neuron. And, and the impulses are sent down into the cell body, which is also known as the soma, where the nucleus is housed. And the nucleus contains the genetic material for the cell in the form of DNA. And then the impulse passes through the axon hillock. Then it goes through the axon. And the axon's pretty much just a track that is used to shoot the impulse down to the axon terminal of the neuron. And on the axon, you can find myelin sheath, which helps uh, the impulse travel faster. And Schwann cells make up the myelin sheath. And in between the myelin sheath, there are small gaps, and these are known as the nodes of Ranvier. And the nodes of Ranvier also help the impulse travel faster. So that's the basic anatomy of a nerve cell. Now let's take a look at what happens during neural firing. The process of neural firing is basically the sending of impulses between neurons. At its resting stage, every individual neuron is more negatively charged on the inside than on the outside, meaning it has more negative ions on the inside than on the outside. But for a neuron to fire, it needs more positively charged ions on the inside than on the outside. So for that to happen, positively charged ions on the outside must move into the cell. And for this to happen, we need a stimulus. The stimulus could be in the form of anything. But for example, let's just say a plate fell on your leg. The neurons on your leg are triggered by this stimulus, and the cell membrane of each neuron opens up and lets in positive ions in order to increase its charge. And after a certain number of positively charged ions are inside, the nerve will fire. The amount of ions a neuron needs to fire is called the threshold of the neuron. And once the threshold is met, the neuron reaches its action potential. And after that, the neuron fires. So that being said, what happens at the axon hillock is that the nerve basically checks if a threshold is met. And if the threshold is met, the impulse is shot down the axon like a bullet. And I think that's a pretty good analogy because a gun needs certain bullets to fire, and the bullets 
in this case would be the positively charged ions. And once the positively charged ions are there, the impulse is shot down the axon just like a bullet is shot out of a gun. It travels so fast and it ends up in the axon term. Now, one term that I forgot to mention was depolarization. Depolarization is basically when positively charged ions are moving into the cell. So that's depolarization. And repolarization is when the positively charged ions move out of the cell after the cell has fired. And this period is called as the refactory period. During this period, the neuron cannot fire. It has to wait for the neuron to return to the resting potential. And then once again, it can start its depolarization. But until then, the impulse has to wait. So once this impulse is sent, it reaches the axon terminal. But now what? How is the impulse going to go to the next neuron? Like I said before, neurons are connected by their dendrites in the axon terminal. So when the impulse from the first neuron is sent to the axon terminal of that neuron, two types of synapses can take place. And a synapse is nothing but the connection between an axon terminal of the sending neuron and the dendrite of a receiving neuron. There's one called the electrical synapse where the dendrite and the axon terminal are close by and they're sending the impulse at a very fast speed because it's a very urgent impulse. But normally a chemical synapse will take place. And for a chemical synapse to take place, neurotransmitters will be used. And neurotransmitters are housed in the axon terminals of each neuron. And when the impulse is sent to the axon terminal after the neuron fires, the neurotransmitters are sent to the dendrite of the receiving neuron. And in the dendrite, you'll find receptor sites for different types of neurotransmitters. There are so many different neurotransmitters that if I start explaining them, it'll take forever to finish. So just know that neurotransmitters help communicate a impulse from one cell to the next cell. But coming back to chemical synapses, once the neurotransmitters are sent to the dendrite, the neurotransmitters can help either fire the next neuron or they can stop the firing. Any neurotransmitter that provides the stimulus to help the next neuron fire is called a excitatory neurotransmitter and any neurotransmitter that helps inhibit the next neuron from firing is called a inhibitory neurotransmitter. Once the neurotransmitters are accepted by the receptor site of the next neuron, the process repeats and neural firing happens. And we go back to this diagram over here and when the neurotransmitters come in and if they're excitatory neurotransmitters and there are enough neurotransmitters then the cell membrane will open up again and the depolarization will start up and once the threshold is met the neuron will fire and this will repeat all over again and yeah that's how a chem chemical synapse takes place and you should note that in either synapse both the neurons are never touching in a electrical synapse the neurons are very close by but not touching in a chemical synapse, the neurons are not as close by and they're never touching. I know that was a lot of information, so let's quickly recap. For an impulse to be sent down the axon of a neuron, a certain threshold of positive charge has to be met. And if this threshold is met, the impulse is sent down the axon. And once it gets to the axon terminal, if it's a urgent message that has to be delivered, then a electrical synapse will happen. Otherwise, neurotransmitters are used for chemical synapses. And the receptor sites in the dendrites of the receiving neuron will accept the neurotransmitters. And if there are enough neurotransmitters, and if the neurotransmitters are excitatory, then the next neuron will fire, and so on and so forth. And just know that there are so many different neurotransmitters that each one has different jobs and a lack of a certain type of neurotransmitter might cause different problems. I'll probably do a YouTube short on the major neurotransmitters in your body. But also, after the receptor sites accept the neurotransmitter and they don't need them anymore, a process called reuptake takes place. And reuptake is when the sending neuron or the presynaptic neuron takes back the neurons it sent to the postsynaptic neuron. Postsynaptic meaning the neuron that's receiving the information and presynaptic neuron is the neuron that's sending the information pre, before, post, after. 
presynaptic, before synapse, postsynaptic is after synapse. And just to be clear again, this is the dendrite of the postsynaptic neuron, and this is the axon terminal. So that is basically neurons in a nutshell. Now, just know that there is so much more to neurons and their activities. If you want to learn more, there's always a lot more research online. But this video was just meant to help you grasp the main ideas of neurons and how they fire and how they communicate with each other. I'm always open to comments, suggestions, and or questions. This is the Brainy Heart signing off. I'll catch you later in the next video.